Hi, I'm Debbie Nelson. I am contributing editor and project manager for Nixine Publishing here in the United States. And today I have the honor of discussing graphene with our editor in chief of the Nixine Journal, Adrian Nixon, coming to you from Yorkshire, England. Adrian, good morning. Hello, Debbie. And the honor's mine as well. <laughs> it's good to talk to you. Uh, Good to talk to you too. Um, we're continuing a series of videos that we're doing about graphene and this comes from the Graphene 101 presentation that you've made all over the world, right? Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, we've been delivering this now to all sorts of people. So briefing your politicians and policymakers in DC, which is uh, where we met last year. Yes. And then uh, we've delivered the 101 in the heart of Graphene Central at the NGI in, in Manchester. Uh, and then lots of other places as well. And we were booked to deliver this all over the world, but with the COVID coming along, um, we've gone virtual. So we're taking extracts from this and feeding it into this video series as well. All right, perfect. Well, um, what we're gonna talk about today is, well, I have questions for you. I always have questions. Good. We're gonna talk about uh, the dimensions of graphene or, or mm -hmm. 2D materials and, um, to begin with, what could you just tell us what we hear about 2D all the time, but what does it actually mean? How would you describe it? That is a really, really good question because people talk about 2D materials without actually fully understanding what it means. And when I talk to people, uh, it's quite clear that not, not very many people actually fully understand this. So can I share my screen and show you a slide, Debbie? And, yes, okay. let's do that. Let's have a look at this. So if I bring this one up and share, I'll make that full screen and I'll okay. take our videos away for the video recording. So looks great. You can see it, can you? Yes, everything looks great. Good. These are dimensions of carbon. Um, now, where to begin? Let's start over here with diamonds. So diamonds are, and, and to, just a quick recap, from one of our previous videos, we talked about carbon allotropes and graphene and diamond both being made of carbon. It's the same material, it's just organized in different ways. Yes. And that plays to this idea of dimensions. So the original term dimensions meant it was a mathematical thing. So in graphene, the way that electrons move around in the sheet of graphene can be described as mathematics just in two dimensions. So that is, strictly speaking, where the dimensions thing came from. However, we can sort of hijack that and use it to broaden out to a, a series of materials because lots of people um, I'm noticing when they talk about carbon materials use these dimensions. So let's put this onto a firm footing. So can you see over on the left hand side, we've got diamond. Um, yeah. I've got amorphous carbon and that is a 3D material. So we've got the, uh, the black powder here. We have um, a cut diamond and interestingly, this. Uh, rhomboid shape is a rough diamond uh, as they come out of the ground. Um, this is what the scaffolding structure looks like. These are carbon atoms joined together with bonds and um, it's difficult to see in a, a, a flat picture. Maybe a little bit later Debbie I, I might get a, a dynamic model out in a future video to show the readers but this is a three-dimensional structure, um, a scaffold if you like, um, where the carbon can grow out in any one of, it could go up or down, left or right, back to front. So it can grow in any one of those three dimensions equally. And that's what diamond is. And it all locks together in 3D. Over here, we've got a sheet of graphene. Now you can see here, the graphene is actually uh, organized in a flat sheet hexagon chicken wire. And now, can you see that we've only got two dimensions we can grow out on? So we can either go out in the... Um, uh, the X, Y, or which is uh, sort of left or right, or back to front. And we can't go up or down because that is laying another sheet on there. So this, okay. that's why graphene is a 2D material. Does that make sense so far? Yes, yes. Hmm, good. Now, now let's go on to carbon nanotubes. If you hmm. imagine you take that graphene sheet and roll it up into something that looks a bit like a toilet roll tube. Okay. Core, then... You can see here that we've got the hexagon all wrapped around in the tube now. Um, it can't grow out in any direction except from either end. So it's constrained now to growing out just in one dimension, one direction. Get oh, that? 
Interesting. If you if you had a much wider sheet of graphene, say, to, if would it curl around to make a larger circle? Of yes. Yes, two? it would. Exactly. Yes. The in principle, there is no size limit on how big you can make a carbon nanotube. Yes, it could. Very good point. Um, in, uh, in they're called nanotubes because these are down at a very very tiny scale but you're quite right they you could if you had a big enough sheet of graphene curl it back round on itself and bond it to form a very very big um tube if you like now there are other types of materials um i think we uh, prior to doing this video you were talking about fullerenes and saying you, know, you discovered something about them I did. I was doing some reading and some research, and and I noticed Bucky Fullerene was actually a person. Yeah. So they named this for someone. Buckminster Fuller was an architect who designed geodesic domes, and he was uh, quite popular in the sixties. And the Fullerene here, this this um, is like a, a football. I think in America you probably call it a soccer ball. It's made yeah. up of um, hexagons, and I don't know. Can you see there are some pentagons in there as well? Oh, that's interesting. Oh, well, I guess so. If you're circular, yes, you, you can't make a circle out of just hexagons. It has to be pentagons and hexagons mixed together to make it all wrap around. And that particular one is something called C60. Um, that was discovered in uh, the 1980s by a guy called Harry Croto, Professor Harry Croto in Sussex University in the UK. So he won the Nobel Prize for that discovery, actually. Oh. And what it is, it's a cage of carbon atoms, exactly the same as graphene, carbon nanotubes and diamonds. Same material, carbon again, just organised in a slightly different way. And this particular one here has 60 carbon atoms, so it's called C60. But can you see that once it's grown up and closed in on itself, there's no way you can add any more carbons? Yeah, I was I was noticing that, and my I was curious to know whether they each behave the same way. You have the graphene in the sheets, you have the graphene in the tubes, and then you have it in the the sphere that way. If they if they behave differently, really good question. Yeah, uh, they behave very differently. So if you put uh, just take an example, if you put um, diamond into a solvent, uh, benzene, something like that, um, then nothing much happens, it just sort of sits there. Put graphene into benzene, nothing much happens, it just sits there. Carbon nanotubes the same. You put fullerenes in and it goes bright red. Oh. And that's how they were discovered in the first place. Um, mm. And it's all to do with the way that the uh, carbon atoms in the solvent interact with light. Then we've got an, another one down here. Now, this is, this is something called cyclocarbon. Can you see it's made up of um, carbon atoms all joined in a ring? There are 18 carbon atoms here. And this is just a flat ring. So it's the, um, a flat analog of this fullerene. And this cyclocarbon, it's, uh, the, you see these three bars and then a single bar? Yes. Yeah, that's a single bond, triple bond, single bond, triple bond. It alternates all the way around. This was made by a team in Switzerland just a few months ago, uh, late last year, uh, when they reported it. It's a brand new discovery, a brand new form of carbon. And they actually made that with some really clever chemistry. That again is a zero dimensional material because you can't add any more carbon to it once it's formed. It's set. Okay. Hmm. I understand. All right. So you're, you've got your 3D, so you're going to come out in all the different directions. You've got yep. your 2 so you can only go out in those directions and you have your 1D that can only go in just length, right? I mean, that's yeah, exactly. it. Yeah. Then your zero that doesn't go anywhere, it's going to stay put. Precisely, you've got it. And that's really all dimensions are. The reason that two dimensions are important is because, um, and this, this was Andrei Geim and uh, Kostya Novoselov's second paper after they'd isolated graphene and won the Nobel Prize they actually realized and proved that there is a whole range of these other 2D materials out there. And that's something probably that we've, um, we can save for another video because that would open up a whole landscape to explore. So 2D yeah. material is where the action is. It's not just graphene, there's lots of other stuff, but hopefully everybody has the idea about what dimensions are and why they're important. I think that was a great explanation Great, thanks. I'll stop sharing. <laughs> Thank you so much. That that really helped to uh, to 
break it down and be able to give it that nice visual of, 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 of really what it means because we, we talk about it all the time. Exactly, yeah. And most people talk about it, use the words and don't fully understand what they mean. Hopefully we've given some solid footing there for people now to actually deep, uh, understand at a deeper level what it is that they're all talking about. So we'll explore some of the um, implications of this in future videos. But for now, I think, Debbie, we're, uh, we, we can wrap up there, I think. I think so. It was great talking to you. Thank you so much, Adrian. We appreciate it. Likewise, Debbie. We'll do lots more of these. Wonderful. See you next time. Bye-bye.